hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna pretend that we're having lunch together. And you actually ask me, hey Gio, how do I actually build a smart home? Where do I start? What do I need to know about? What are the common mistakes, myths, principles, and ideas? Is a smart home actually gonna improve the quality of my life, make it easier for my family? So if you don't know me, I'm Gio from Smart Home Makers, and my goal is to help you transform and inspire your smart homes with cool automation ideas and product reviews. At the end of the video, I'm gonna have a cool bonus feature for those of you that actually stick around. More about that later. During this video, I'm gonna actually show you the exact process as if you actually paid me to teach it. We're gonna go through it, but I'm gonna do it for free. In fact, I'm gonna actually be here live during the premiere chatting with you. So this video isn't a step-by-step -step installation of any smart home software like Home Assistant or Open Hub or, or anything else. There are plenty of videos around in, on YouTube about that, on my channel, on other people's channel. This video is gonna be quite unique because we're gonna talk about the ideas, principles behind a smart home. First thing we'll be actually looking at are ideas, pain points, and principles of our smart home. If you are here, I'm assuming that you actually wanna take your smart home to the next level and automate mundane tasks. And you should know that during this video, I'll be pitching something that I think will give you tremendous value. And I do hope that you do sign up to it. So the first thing to do is ideas. So what we want to do is we wanna gather the whole family, gather everyone around, everyone that lives in the home, and actually start coming up with automation ideas. So some of you might be aware of this. This is WAF, wife acceptance factor. We're not having that anymore. This is out. It's not either wife acceptance factor or partner acceptance factor or whatever way you want to say it. This needs to be a teamwork. Your whole family needs to gather, needs to rally around it. That's the best way of having a successful smart home is to get everyone involved in the family, especially in the ideas generating part. So the big question I have for you at this stage is, why? Why are you actually building a smart home? Why do you want to build a smart home? I'm going to share with you now why I built a smart home initially. But what I want you to do now is pop in the comment section or in the live chat, why are you actually wanting to build a smart home? Or why do you actually have a smart home? So now I hope you can see this and you actually know how bad my handwriting really is. So these are my four whys. Simplify my life, have better control, so knowing what's going on, in my home. House value is actually something quite interesting because this is what happened to me when I sold my first home and I had some smart features, not as many as I have now, and it actually increased my property value or at least made it very simple to sell. And lastly, playing with tech. We all love our gadgets. We like to try out new stuff. I'm a software guy, so I love that part. But it all needs to fit in. So it needs to simplify my life it needs to get me more control. Ultimately, if it can't be a hack, can't be something that's gonna decrease my house value, it needs to look good even for people externally in case I wanna sell my house. But I, I still wanna be able to play around with tech. So how do we actually do it? How do we brainstorm ideas? Let me give you a framework right now. So when I want, but only. So phrase your automations in natural language or in any language that you actually speak, you can translate this into that. I can give an example. When I get up in the morning and walk in the kitchen, I want my coffee machine to turn on, but only if I already haven't had tea, for example. So this will give you a framework of how you can actually phrase your automations to see what actually you want to achieve by having a smart home. Now let me know some of your top automation ideas that you've got coming up in the chat now. So now that you actually know, and once you engage with your family, you get an idea of what automations you wanna build, you prioritize them, so you know which one is the first one you gotta tackle, and then you start from there. So instead of thinking about have building and going out and spending thousands of pounds and dollars at the same time, you start with one project. You tackle one project at a time, and you learn from each project that you actually do. So you take a few smart gadgets, you buy them, you implement them, and then you see if you enjoy it, if you like it, you'll go and buy more, and you can expand your smart home network. But you need to lay good foundations, and we're gonna talk about that right now. So before you actually start your smart home journey, I'm gonna actually give you some more information about mistakes. What are the common mistakes that you need to be actually looking at 
and paying very careful attention to as you build your smart home. First most common mistake is over automating. So over automating will cause you a problem where you will be owned by your smart home and not owning your smart home. So what do I mean by that? You're automating tasks that clearly do not need to be automated and you're creating all of this complexity going back to the principles of simplifying your life. It is not going to simplify your life. So you need to really be careful, pay careful attention that you don't over automate. You try to go overboard. The second mistake that you can make is what we say in England, putting all your eggs in one basket. So relying on one manufacturer for all of your smart home devices. So for example, you pick Philips Hue, big manufacturer, you buy everything from Philips Hue, you're tied into that one manufacturer, you have that one app, but then you have no flexibility, you can't buy other devices, you're waiting for Philips Hue to release a new, new device. If they put the prices up, you have no control and you're tied in. And it's something that businesses call locking effect. They want you to be locked in into their ecosystem. Apple, they do the same thing. They have a brilliant system and I'm sure HomeKit is amazing. I do use HomeKit, but I can't rely on it for my smart home because it locks me in and I'm tied into anything that HomeKit is compatible with. That is the reason why I actually recommend Home Assistant, which is compatible for more than, I think now 1,700 devices. So you've got plenty of devices to pick from and choose whatever works for you. So the third most common mistake that I see is the magpie syndrome. So a magpie is a bird, if you didn't know, and this bird loves shiny things, okay? So what do we mean by magpie syndrome? You see a new device, a new gadget, say, hey, that looks really nice. I wanna get it, I wanna buy it. But then you don't know what to use it for. You haven't thought about the use case for it and it might not even fit within your smart home. Apart from that, the magpie syndrome actually adds to your smart home cost tremendously because you're always going out buying new devices. I can give you another example, for example, with smartphones. If you were to buy the top of the range, thinking of, well, that's gonna future-proof me, but nowadays that top of the range phone probably is not gonna be valid. And the same can be said for smart home devices. All of these devices here, you know, in the future, there's always going to be better devices coming along that could actually replace the devices that we have. And that's a risk that we have anywhere, anytime we use technology. But if the device is still actually taking care of business, it's doing what it's supposed to do, you have no real incentive to just change it for something that is slightly better. So it's really important to think about the marginal improvement that you get when you upgrade your smart home devices. If you only take away one thing out of this video, it's the fact that smart homes need to solve problems to enhance your life. These are two critical statements. This is the way I see smart homes. They need to be able to solve a problem or a pain point and they need to enhance your life. The actual fact that there is smart technology behind it should not make your life more difficult or your family's life or any person coming in your home life more difficult. So let me give you an example. I'm going to get something upstairs. So this is an iron. If you don't know what this is, I'm assuming you do know what it is. So when I was a kid, I actually touched one of these irons when they were on and I've got a scar and this is a scar for life. So how can we actually, what can we do, right? We have little kids around and obviously we need to pay very attention, close attention to these devices. And what do you do if, for example, we leave the iron on? Has that ever happened to you or to anyone else in your family? How do you actually know? How could you turn this off remotely, for example? Or how could you actually automate it so that you can actually turn it off without you actually thinking or actually knowing that you forgot about it? This is where this little device comes in, right? So this device over here, it's a smart plug and it has energy monitoring. So this is able to give me a reading of how much energy this iron is actually using. So I actually know, thanks to this, that my iron is turned on. And what I can do is I can set a timeout functionality with this device and I can say, well, well after five minutes, 10 minutes, I can actually turn this off automatically. To actually use this, you would just plug this in 
here like this and you plug this into a wall and you can get this configured. This is one of the many devices that sit in my smart home but actually need to serve a real purpose. So you can probably think of your own device, your own iron that you want to actually secure, put the, one of these behind them. You can actually also disable them with voice assistant. So if you have one of these around, you can actually use these to command these switches and basically command these devices with your voice. So now that I've given you that example, you can actually start thinking about your own pain points. And in the next part of the video, I'm gonna give you a bunch of automation ideas, things that I've already done in the past. I'll give you some, a lot of information, but it's really gonna be up to you to think of your own pain points. And I hope this actually makes you think about smart homes, not as a gimmick, but actually as a way to enhance our life. And also in this example, have a safer home, you know, and reduce domestic uh, incidents that happen all the time, especially when you have little kids around. So there are so many things that you can do with a smart home and really it's just bound to your own imagination. But thinking about ideas first, then point pain points, considering those common mistakes that you need to think of. And now let me just give you a bunch of automation ideas and I hope you enjoy them. And remember to stick till the end because you're gonna have a really cool surprise. Hey guys, okay, so as promised, let's jump into the screen, let's look at some of the, oh. Hey guys, as promised, let's jump into the screen and let's look at some automation ideas. So let me talk to you about this automation. Now, the purpose of this one is to have a recorded voice of someone reading a book, and we can scan this little tag here, the one that says story, and then we can actually have our speaker read out that story. So the use case is for a grandparent, someone that lives quite far away, they can record this MP3 file and then we can actually hear their own voice through the speaker. And as you open the book, you just need to open the book obviously and follow along the story as it goes. So in this automation here, I'm actually watering a plant. Well, I'm not automatically watering a plant, I haven't got there yet, but what I'm doing here, I'm actually scanning a tag that's close to the plant. So we actually know when we've watered the plant the last time. This can enable us to do automations, for example, to figure out when is the next time we need to water it, send notifications to people, phones, and all sorts of things. So this one here is a bit of a spring automation. And so we've got our garden light outside and we can have a, another NFC tag uh, sit situated underneath the table. Let me show you right now. There you go, so you can see our tag, a tag sitting on the table here, and we can scan it and that will turn on the light. That's quite convenient because sometimes these light switches are inside the home and not outside. You can also hide them, for example, under this glass table so you can't, can't actually see them, right? So you can do have some sort of little special effect for your barbecue parties. So you can see me here now in my car. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm sorry, excuse me for the dust in the in the car probably hasn't got any better now and you can see we've got another one of these little tags that we can use our phone to scan and by scanning the tag i'm actually able to open my garage door that's quite useful in case you don't have your keys on you and for example you can put it on the wall or whatever and this will just trigger it and open up your garage door so in this blog post and video that i've got here We've got a motion alarm sensor. So obviously here uh, there isn't anything really to be concerned of that little cat um, and that fork lift. But anyway, the, the idea is that you can also create automations that send a notification to your phone with uh, an image of the camera. And then you can have buttons set down below, for example, silence the alarm in case the alarm was triggered. And if you see, oh no, but that's just my pet triggering the alarm then that's not a problem at all. This is another interesting use case. What I'm doing is I'm using a standard camera, an IP camera, and I've got it and I'm using it as a baby monitor and I'm using an Apple TV and I'm combining together with a motion sensor. So whenever there's motion detected and the baby is sleeping, then I'm going to stream the feed from the camera onto the TV. 
and you can use any provider for example if you're using an apple tv or roku uh, anything that's really compatible into home assistant so this is not just a thing that will work with an apple tv you can pick and choose your devices so you can also do this as you wish in this automation here i'm triggering a notification anytime i'm on a conference call and i'm at work this can actually help my family understand and know when I'm on a video call, so that they don't probably come in the room or start talking to me. This could be useful for anyone that actually works with other people in their home. So let me play this right now so you can actually see. So you can see right there, the notification pops up, or it, it will pop up obviously on the device of the person that I'm trying to notify anytime either my um, camera or microphone is in use. So this is one of my recent automations that I made. So we've got a uh, delivery at the door and with my mobile phone, I'm able to actually, actually open the garage door and I can actually monitor the whole situation from my dashboard. So I can see that a person's coming in, leaving everything safe, probably not taking anything with them, which is quite crucial. And this is another great use case of what you can do by combining things together. If you ever wanted to do that, obviously. In this blog post right here, I've got free automation tips for a robot vacuum and this is one of my favorite automations this was what well, probably one of my first videos so it's not really great in terms of production wise but the ideas behind it are really good few things few pain points around robot vacuums if you have one you probably know they get lost sometimes they don't they're not able to return to base for some reason and and they're just in the middle of the room so there's an automation that you can actually create to to enable it to go back to the base so it can continue charging. Another automation I used over here is that as soon as I leave my house, the vacuum cleaner starts cleaning. And as soon as I return back, it stops cleaning. So I can never, it will keep the house clean while I'm away, which is quite important. And another really good one is the uh, accounter that you can create to actually find out how many times has the robo vacuum you know made a cycle around the house so that you can predict when to empty the bin so this one's a quite interesting automation this is using plex media server which is a very common media server that you can use but you can use anything that really is working on your tv and uh, here what i'm doing is i'm i'm able to actually find out what the kids are watching for example, they try attempting to watch Joker 2019, but it's after their bedtime, as you can see from the notification that you get on your phone. So then you found, let me play this a second so you can actually see what happens. You can actually decide to click on it and turn off the device itself. So you could do this, for example, with a tablet or any device. You can set a bedtime schedule. And if anyone actually goes over that, you can just turn it off remotely. That will then in turn, send them a notification on their device basically saying go to bed with love or whatever you want to say right so with home assistant you can actually use presence detection and zones to ring fence certain areas longitudes and latitudes and basically trigger automations based on that here for example i've put my favorite shopping center and i actually get a notification when i go into that zone basically reminding me hey, uh, you know, sanitize your hands and wear a face covering or whatever. But you can customize this to whatever you wish. So another one that you can actually do is to remind your partner that they actually um, to pick something up from the store. So here it is. So you can see it right here. Let me play this. So you've got an idea. So your partner gets at the store. You can then uh, send a, a message. For example, you can text whatever you want. And then that message will get automatically rebated and be sent over to them now you can also set up a custom diy security alarm system and you can reuse your motion sensors your contact sensors that you're already using for other use cases and you can also use for example lights flashing red or your speakers sounding like, like a siren sound and you can create your own complementary alarm system where i go through that in much more detail and as you can see here, you can create your nice, you can use a tablet, use a, a nice, you know, alarm code feature. You can see if, you know, the sensors are clear or not. You can sound an alarm 
so you can customize this in any way you actually want so you might be thinking how do i actually get all of this done what is the easiest way and what is the best way to get there let me show you what i've been actually working on and i'm sure this could give tremendous amount of value to you so i've been working on a course called how to build a smart home and this course details from the beginning from planning to buying devices to actually getting these devices in configuring them into home assistant installing home assistant and then creating your automations and this could be split up by modules and i'm going to give you a bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes of the course but i also want to let you know that this course is a living course so we'll have all current smart home and it will have all future modules will be added to them as i add more to my smart home as i get there so this is going to be a really cool reference point that you can use going forward at any time to look back at a certain area as soon as you get to it so here you can see the actual course curriculum that i'm actually using this is the actual content and the meat of the course first things first is planning planning we got to go into a lot more detail than what we covered today buying smart home devices will give you a guide to how to buy smart home devices and actually what to look at how to save money this is really important installation configuration of home assistant there'll be a few options there to actually get home assistant up and running we're going to talk about the basics of adding devices to home assistant and then from there onwards we're going to have different modules so in the first release the release for this course is monday the 15th of March, this course is going to be going to release uh, 2021. So we will have control lights, heating and cooling, camera surveillance, and Nabucasa on Monday. And then therefore, after we'll be adding in, I'll be releasing uh, content as soon as I can. On at least every week, there'll be new chapters to be added. So we look at voice assistants, media players, garage doors. We're going to be creating a cool dashboard. We're going to be looking at creating automations, how the automations work, zones. As a bonus, I'm going to also throw in all of my code so you can access all of my code. You're going to get a one to one call with me to plan your smart home together. And this is just for the people that actually are going to buy the pre release. And also, I'm going to throw in a bonus a whole DIY home alarm solution that you can buy reusing the components that you've already purchased for actually to actually build your smart home it's not going to cost you anything more and you can use that and you can build it and it can work alongside your existing alarm security if you have one or it can be able to cover that and let me give you a little bit of a sneak peek of the course let me go into the admin area and let me show you around a bit okay so this is the behind the scenes of the course you can see the some of the previews here there's going to be a nice cool brainstorming worksheet. You can see some lessons around how to control your smart home. How does a smart home work? Principles of my smart home. We also are going to cover what devices are compatible with home assistant. Yeah, an actual smart home buying list. Uh, the ongoing costs of running a smart home. We're going to talk about various things. Obviously, then we're going to go into more practical side of the course. We're going to talk about installing Home Assistant, different options that you have to install Home Assistant. What add-ons do you actually need to run in Home Assistant? How do you use it? How do you restart? How do you create backups? How do you do system updates? So some of the basic information to run your smart home. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about again, the concepts in Home Assistant. We'll be having a look at actual devices so in the control lights module we look at integrating the philips u for example a shelly device lifex sonoff we talk about how to add zigbee devices we're looking at converting lights into switches what about buttons how can we use buttons how can we use door contacts motion sensors how we can actually use uh is a good example here a porch light automation motion sensors in our smart home so the format of the course will be a lot of it will be tutorial based with my camera showing some of it will be just focusing on uh theoretical concepts but it's really everything you need to know to get from a to b it's a shortcut 
it is not baking as much as I can into a course. It is actually simplifying it for you, like how like what we should be doing with our smart homes and get you to where you want to get quicker. Now, I know this is going to give you a tremendous amount of value. I just want to let you know and be very open and honest with you that the current price is a pre-order price and the price will go up after it launches and then it will go up again once it's fully complete once all of the 18 modules have been released so first of all i want to really thank you guys the guys have actually already pre-ordered i really appreciate the trust that you put in me and actually pre-ordering a product that hasn't been wasn't even released yet but now we're getting very close to the release date the modules and the chapters are being have been are being filmed constantly we're getting there so really now do you got two options and i'm really going to be happy either way so a free option you can continue watching free videos on youtube and on my blog and you can find out research and figure it out by yourself which is absolutely fine and i'm happy to have you here as a subscriber or just as a viewer and even if you just view one minute or two minutes of my videos i think that's going to give you some some use so i'm really happy to have you but if you want a shortcut your transformation if you want to get there sooner if you follow along with my same principles if you want to have and build your own smart home similar to my own smart home then this is really the quickest way you can actually get there so i really suggest checking the link down in the description below if you can click on that you can actually go to the checkout page i'm really looking forward to see you there once the course releases you have 14 days to have a look at the content watch it and if you're not happy with it you can also decide to cancel your subscription and i will refund you no questions asked once you've signed up you'll be in the mailing list and you'll be notified as soon as it launches so you'll be all settled i'll then contact you for the one-to-one -one session and we'll try to book it in at our earliest convenience now you've been very patient with me and we're really nearly at the end of the training but you remember that special bonus that i mentioned at the very beginning of this video we're going to do it right now so now i'm going to give you in the chat you should see details of a zoom call that will happen in five minutes so i'm going to give you guys a five minute break you can get some water get a coffee get a beer whatever you want and in five minutes time i actually see you guys and a zoom call and i hope a few of you will jump along you can come along if you don't want to come along you want to show your camera that's fine too i'll be there for quite some time and i'll answer some of your questions and we'll just hang out we'll just have a little bit of a chit chat that's awesome too if you have questions about the course please feel free to come and ask these questions but this is not a session just for people that want to get the course or they purchase the course this is a session really for everyone just to hang out a little bit after this training that we've had so this was a really long lunch we've finished our dessert we've got a coffee we've got our food or whatever and now really it's time to see you on the other side and i really do hope that one day we'll be able to meet up and have lunch or a get together but in the meantime you guys stay safe and i'll see you on the other end of the zoom call if you're going to join if not see ya